Hey, Tommy. Hey, Kelly. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Oh, nice new kitchen. Thank you. I really appreciate it. This looks great. Well, you wrote me about some projects that you have? Yeah, so we bought this house a few months ago. It needed a little bit of a hug. We didn't have the budget to do a full renovation. So we decided to just take on a few projects ourselves. So okay. we painted the cabinets. Oh, they look nice. Thank you. We had someone come in and do a tile backsplash and floor mm -hmm. for us. Granite countertops? Yeah, yeah, they were existing actually, but oh, really? um, now they look like a completely new kitchen. Yeah, it's amazing what some paint and tile will do. Yeah, yeah. And then we leveled the floors, did some tile. Okay, so what do you need me for? So what we were left with is an unfinished baseboard. Oh, so, the tool kick? Yeah, so when we moved in, there was vinyl, uh, vinyl baseboard, and yeah. we're left with all the glue spots, and we weren't sure what to do to finish it off. Yeah, I can see the glue spots, that's for sure. So you took those off, we can fix those. And do you have anything else? I think you said there was a couple of things yeah, you wanted so, to do. Yeah, so like I said, when we did the flooring, we decided to level the floor because it's such an old house. Mm -hmm. And when everyone left, we went to open the door and then noticed that it wouldn't open all the way. So they didn't cut the door. All right, so that's a pretty easy pro that's a pretty easy problem we can fix. So this is a little bit of a punch list. I mean, we deal with punch lists all the time on the job site. There's always something that's forgotten or you got to tighten up or touch up. So a little punch list in this kitchen is not bad. Yeah, that would be a huge help. All right, do you have any idea what you want to do for the product underneath the? So I was thinking about some PVC trim. PVC trim, okay, that comes now white. Are you gonna paint it? I don't think I wanna paint it. I want something really easy to clean. All right, that sounds easy. We'll take some measurements and we can get started. Great, thank you. All right, Kelly, here's the piece of PVC trim. I bought a bunch of this stuff to do all the base. This is a one by four, which means it's three quarters of an inch thick and three and a half inches wide. Now, the base, it's gonna sit right under here, underneath the cabinet, right in front where the old one went. But now the baseboard here, your floor is straight and the cabinets are still a little bit of an angle to them. So this has actually got a little bit of a wedge shape to it. So we have to scribe it to fit underneath at the top, not on the bottom, because the floor is nice and straight. But First thing I look at is the inside of the cabinet. Well, the floor of the cabinet is up much higher than the lower edge of the cabinet right here. So if I take my hand, I can reach up there and that space between the bottom edge here and the underside of the floor of the cabinet is probably three quarters to one inch. So I could take this piece of one by four and put it up here and try to twist it. But the reason I can't get it in is because the end of the cabinet over here and the end of the cabinet down here is in my way. So what I have to do is take the baseboard, hold it against the face of the cabinet, and holding it up and down straight and tight to the floor. I'll mark here, over here, because this is the other end of the cabinet, right there. And we'll do right here, okay? So we push this one in and make sure it's down onto the floor, and I'll mark it right here. And I'll put a pencil mark on our base so we know where I want to notch it. Three locations. Okay, next thing I want to do is take this out of the way and I want to measure from the underside here to my line. That'll tell me how deep the notch has to be. That's a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to come down a quarter. I'm going to give me an eighth of an inch more. Make it three eighths of an inch right there. All right, so now we're going to cut these notches out. And I could do it with an electric saw or we could do it with a hand saw. All right, so we're going to do it with a pull saw. I'll cut this one on the end and I'm going to let you cut those. Great. All right, so it's, I'm just going to cut it. Now I'm going to turn it so I can cut it the other way. Okay, so there's one. All right, so now I'm gonna have you cut these two here. First, we'll use a pull saw at the top. And the weight of the saw, line your shoulder up with the handle of the saw and you'll cut it straight. See, you're letting the saw do the work and that's good. Yeah, can you get one of these? All right, so now to cut across this line on the bottom here, we'll use a coping saw. The coping saw will allow us to come down onto the cut blade is on an angle so when I come across slowly turn the saw until I'm flat enough so that I can come across Yep. 
because this section of the toe kick is meant to be removable because we ran it across the face of the dishwasher, we're gonna screw it in place and to hide the screws, we're gonna just spray them white. All right, Kelly, I pre-cut the pieces that are gonna go around this cabinet. We're gonna do this one a little bit different than we did where the dishwasher is. We're gonna miter the outside corners. Over there, we butted those pieces together because you wanna be able to pull that base off if you ever have to service the washing machine. So I've cut them to fit. We're gonna miter this one here. And I got a miter on both ends of this one. I'm gonna slide it in like that. And that one is gonna go on the other side. We're gonna put it in there loose because what I wanna do is I wanna glue this joint first and then you're gonna nail it. This is specially designed cement for this product. Wipe it on. Okay, so our toe kick is in around the cabinets, and now it's time to tackle the second project. So, now I see the door. It looks a little different there underneath the spacing. I, it hits the floor way back here. Now, when I look at the door back here, I can see that it's settled down. So I can't just take a level and mark off of the door. So I think what we'll do is we'll take this space right here, which is a half an inch to the floor. And where this door hits the floor back here, if I take a half an inch off of this side of the door to nothing, it should open up about the same perpendicular to the wall. All right. All right, so let's get it off the hinges and we can cut it down. Ready, let's bring it in. All right, Kelly, I think we're all set. Your punch list is complete. Thank you so much. This is so amazing to finally have our kitchen done so we can settle in. Yeah, it looks great. And it's funny how little things like this make a big difference. It really does. So there's one thing left for you to do. Don't forget that you, I want you to sand off or take a razor blade and stand it up and scrape off that spackle once it's dry. I can definitely do that. All right, well, I'll leave it up to you. Thank you so much, really appreciate it. My pleasure, thanks for all your help. Thank you. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project, so be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button to make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.